Hi, I'm Paul Fleissner from Akron, Ohio. I'm here today to discuss the use of biologics in a high tibial osteotomy case. Our patient is a 21-year-old college female basketball player who presented to me one year status post left ACL reconstruction, ALL reconstruction, and partial medial meniscectomy. She presented with medial knee pain and swelling. Her past medical history was pertinent for a previous primary left ACL repair and medial meniscal repair, followed by a partial medial meniscectomy. First is a weight-bearing film of the left knee showing some mild medial compartment narrowing and osteophyte formation. She then had a long-standing film to show that she had seven degrees of varus deformity in the left knee. An MRI was obtained and revealed mild medial and patellofemoral joint osteoarthritis. I felt at this time her treatment options included either a high tibial osteotomy or unicompartmental knee arthroplasty. However, because of her young age and high activity level, I felt that she would do much better with a high tibial osteotomy. It gave her a much better chance of an active lifestyle and did not burn bridges for the future for her. The high tibial osteotomy has been successfully used to treat arthritis of the knee in symptomatic patients with varus deformity for many years. It was initially popularized by Coventry as a lateral closing wedge osteotomy. The current standard for high tibial osteotomies is a medial opening wedge osteotomy. And this is because the deformity is considered to be a proximal tibia vera and you have the ability to modify your correction. There are, however, some drawbacks. There is a higher risk of nonunion because the osteotomy is performed under tension and distraction, and we all know that osteotomies heal better under compression. There's also the possibility of loss of correction when the patient begins weight bearing. The loss of correction can be dealt with by using plates with spacers, which are more reliable in maintaining that correction. And that is why I use this, the Arthrex High Tibial Osteotomy Plate. It has many sizes available in the set that allow you to achieve the de desired correction you would like. And this is a side view of it showing the spacer that is there, and they come by one millimeter increments to give you the ability to fine tune your osteotomy. The medial osteotomy can be augmented by bone grafts, synthetic bone substitutes, PRP, growth factors, and bone marrow split concentrate. There are early encouraging results with PRP, growth factors, and bone marrow split concentrate with bone grafting and bone substitute augmentation. The surgical treatment of this patient involved an initial diagnostic arthroscopy which revealed grade one to two changes of the medial femoral condyle and medial tibial plateau, as well as evidence of her partial previous medial meniscectomy. The patellofemoral joint showed some early changes of the trochlear groove. The ACL and lateral compartment were normal. Therefore, finding no contraindication to a high tibial osteotomy, she underwent a high tibial osteotomy using the Arthrex high tibial osteotomy plate. I used an 11 degree plate because of the fact that she had seven degrees of varus to start with, and I like my patients to wind up with three to six degrees of valgus after correction. The osteotomy was augmented by using the Arthrex product Biosurge, which is a combination of bone marrow spread concentrate from the angel system and Alicent Cure, which is a demineralized bone matrix. And these are our initial post-op films showing in the AP and lateral plane total filling of our osteotomy site. Tomeo et al. in 2010 reported on a series of 20 patients who had underwent a medial opening wedge high tibial osteotomy with an average eight-year follow-up. He used DBM and tricortical iliac crest allograft as his augmentation. He found the average time to full weight bearing was 11.4 weeks, with one patient actually taking 32 weeks to heal enough to begin weight bearing. By using Biosurge in this case, I felt that I took advantage of the bone marrow stem cells and Alcinc Pure properties. It gives you all the potential of autograft without the morbidity or time consumption. Seven weeks postoperatively, you can see on this radiograph she has complete healing of this osteotomy. She started on full weight bearing and progressive strengthening, and at three months, she still had maintenance of her correction and was well on her way to returning to full activities. In this case, combining bone respite concentrate, which provides a rich supply of stem cells, platelets, and growth factors with allocent cure and its osteoinductive matrix, creates a regenerative matrix for the patient. Thus, achieving complete and rapid healing allows faster initiation of therapy and quicker return to life. So keep in mind when treating any situation with delayed healing or the potential for it to consider using bone marrow split concentrate and allocent cure in your patient.